when I moved out of my parents' house and into my own apartment, I had a lot of junk and stuff that I needed to get rid of. I never liked Craigslist because I always found it sketchy, especially after hearing so many stories about it. So I listed a lot of my things on Facebook Marketplace. Things that wouldn't fit in my apartment and that my dad wanted out of the house. My weight set, some old childhood toys, book sets, and a whole bunch of other things. The weight set was what I listed for the most money. It had a barbell, a plate tree stand, and a bunch of plates. I was selling it for $340, which I thought wasn't a bad deal. Surprisingly, I wasn't getting many bites. I'd have some people here in their message asking if it's still available, and then never message me again about it. Until a few days after posting it, a guy named Joe messaged me showing interest. His profile picture was pretty grainy, but it was a guy with a fishing hat on holding up a fish. His account info was private. I couldn't see how many friends he had or anything, only that we had three mutuals. All three of them were girls from my town. The guy's last name was also the last name of a Joe I knew from my town who used to date a girl I was somewhat friendly with, so I right away assumed it was him, especially since I knew that guy liked to fish. After telling him it's still available, he said, great, when can I pick it up? I was pleasantly surprised he didn't try to haggle the price down at all. I said I'm available any night after 7. He said he could come by tonight around 11 p.m. after work. I said that's fine. A little late in my opinion, but if that's what worked for his schedule, it worked for me. I then decided to just be a little friendly and say, hey, you used to date Gina, right? I saw the typing indicator in the chat for a second, but then it went away and he didn't reply. Not for a couple minutes. Then he said yes. I thought it was a little strange, the random pause, but it could have been anything. Maybe he thought it was weird I brought it up, so I just said I knew I recognized your name, lol. He read the message but didn't respond for half an hour. Then I got a message back from him saying, yeah, lol. Can you send me your address and I'll let you know when I'm coming? So I sent him my address. He read it and didn't respond for many hours. By the time I got home from work, it was around 6. I went to the gym and got back around 7.30, the whole time waiting for some kind of acknowledgement from Joe. And then he finally messaged back asking for my number. I gave it to him. And seconds later, I got a text from a number with our area code. I have an iPhone, and when I texted him back, it was green. I sometimes will find that to be a red flag and possibly scams, because most people I know have iPhones. But I wasn't thinking that way with this, because I knew this guy already. He said he'd be over in a few hours, and so I continued about my business. It was now around 11 o'clock, and I was waiting patiently for his text or call. I sent a follow-up saying, let me know when you're coming. It was around 11.30 that he texted me, I'm here, come out. I looked out the front window of my apartment, and I saw a dark-colored car out front in the street. I tried calling him so I could tell him that I'd need help bringing the weights outside. He rejected my call, and then he texted again, yo, come out. I texted back, I see you, you can come in, I just need help with the weights, there's a lot of them. He texted back, nah, gotta see if you're straight first. I had to process what the hell that even meant for a second. All I knew was this did not seem like the way this white as hell fishing dude would be texting. I tried calling one more time and he denied the call again. Now I was suspicious. I decided to text that girl Gina along with the mutual friends I had with Joe on Facebook. The first one to text back was this girl Angela who said OMG that's a catfish someone's pretending to be him. When I asked why she added it, she said it must have been a different name when it added her. I looked out the window again, and the car was still there. Someone was about to do something bad to me. I wasn't sure what, or who, or why. I had no way to contact the real Joe because he didn't seem to have any actual social media profiles. Not public, at least. I kept the door shut and locked and didn't respond any further. I turned off the light in the living room and kinked the blind just a bit. And I swear on my life, there was a guy hiding behind one of the bushes in front of the house. I watched until the car outside honked its horn, and then I saw the guy in the bushes run to the car, and then the car sped off. Witnessing that, I didn't feel relief. I felt gut-wrenching fear, not only of what I just narrowly avoided, but the fact that those people now had my address. The Facebook profile was deleted the next day, after a bunch of people reported it, though I think the people who made the account deleted it or deactivated it themselves. Joe himself confirmed he had nothing to do with any of that, and that someone must have been using his pictures and name to try and scam people in the area. 
though I'm not so sure it was someone trying to scam random people. Because days later, I got this threatening text. Hey yo bitch, watch your back. We know where you live. Keep trying to talk to my girl, see what happens man. We'll fuck you up right outside your crib. Sleep with one eye open pussy, we watching. I brought this to the police, but it was such a low priority report to them that I doubt they ever even looked into it. I have no reason to lie when I say I haven't tried talking to anyone's girl in the slightest. At the time of this incident, I had been seeing a girl pretty much exclusively. I think it's connected. I don't know who it is, I don't know what they were going to do to me if I opened the door, but unfortunately I've had to live in slight fear in my new apartment ever since moving here. Fortunately, I haven't gotten any more threatening or random texts, but I still pretty much always check outside my windows first before leaving the apartment at night. It had to be 2018. I was selling this old pinball machine that we had from our childhood. It wasn't some crazy arcade level pinball machine that would cost thousands of dollars, but it was definitely worth a few hundred bucks. It had been sitting in my parents' attic for the longest time, so I wanted to sell it before one of my sisters had the same idea. I didn't really want anyone to know about this because then I'd have to split the money, so I chose to list it when my family was away on a trip that I couldn't go on due to work. I'm a bit of a sneak, I know, but you gotta do what you gotta do. My parents' house is on the really nice side of town, but not in a gated community. I put the pinball machine up on Facebook Marketplace for $200. The next day, I got a message from some account with no profile picture with the name Jasmine, expressing interest in the pinball machine. They offered $175. I agreed to that number. We set up a time for when she would come, but when that time came, she never showed up. She messaged me saying, I'll be there soon, I'll be there soon. It was getting late now and I had work the next day. I asked her if she would be here by 11 the latest. She said 11.30. I asked if we could do this tomorrow instead, but she said she's already on her way. So, I just stayed up a little later waiting. 11.45 rolls around and she finally tells me that she's here. I went to the front door and saw there was a car out front. What I wasn't expecting was to see all four doors of the car opening and four people stepping out, one girl and three guys. I messaged her, are you here with people? At this point, she wasn't answering her messages anymore. I watched as the four people approached my door. I kept the storm door locked. These three guys looked kind of big, and all four of these people looked like trouble. As they got close enough, I said, are you Jasmine? She said through the door, yeah. I said, I can't let all of you guys in my house. My parents are asleep, obviously lying. Jasmine, or so she claimed her name was, tried opening the door yelling, what are you talking about? As she saw it was locked, she started knocking on the glass. I decided it was best to shut the front door at this point. I heard their voices yelling outside for a while and the doorbell ringing. I heard one of the guys, or maybe even multiple of them, yelling obscenities and insults at me through the two doors, making me only gladder I didn't let them in. These were not the kinds of people I wanted in my parents' house, especially when I'm alone. I realized this whole thing was an awful idea when I heard their voices laughing and yelling on the front stoop for like 10 minutes after I shut the door. I looked out my little brother's bedroom window upstairs, which is directly above the driveway, and I saw one of the guys pissing in the empty driveway. No cars in the driveway was not a good look. The girl yelled something directed at me as they finally started to walk away, but I didn't hear what it was. I just thanked the Lord when they drove away, and I went upstairs to go to sleep. I was having trouble sleeping that night though, thinking of the interaction. So, fully awake, a couple of hours after climbing into bed, I heard a crash from downstairs. It was unmistakably the sound of a window being shattered. I sprang up, but right before sprinting to make sure the bedroom door was locked, I stopped myself and instead quietly got out of bed and tiptoed to the door. I had already locked it. I tiptoed back to my bed and had my phone in hand, ready to call 911. For some stupid reason, I was waiting till I heard any other kind of sounds before dialing, and eventually, I heard the sound I needed to hear. Footsteps rapidly coming upstairs. I dialed 911 as I felt like throwing up. The footsteps outside the room didn't even sound like they were trying to be quiet. I whispered the entire time I was on the line with the dispatcher. Time was moving in reverse. I hid literally under my bed as I listened to people ransacking the house. In reality, they were in and out in less than five minutes, 
way before the police actually showed up. The backyard window was shattered. Things were stolen from just about each room. Ironically, the pinball machine wasn't taken. What happened from there was I got a police report number. I made an appointment to see a couple detectives at the police station and shared with them all the details I had, including the Facebook account of the Jasmine girl. I fabricated the story a bit, saying someone in the house threatened me. My reasoning for this was I felt that this case would actually be taken seriously if I claimed I was threatened. To my surprise, they did take this seriously. The detectives apparently gathered the necessary data of the Facebook account in question to track this Jasmine girl, who lived a few towns over, in a less than desirable area. And with a search warrant, they searched her house and found multiple belongings stolen from my parents' house. She routed out the three men who accompanied her, and they were all charged with burglary. I think most of the stuff that was stolen was recovered. I'm sure there were some things that I wasn't aware of that were stolen that were never returned, but to this day, it hasn't come up, so it's fine. I think by me claiming I was verbally threatened may have definitely helped make the detectives take this more seriously, but I could be wrong. My family was of course livid at first, but came to be understanding about it in the end. I was searching Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace for a new phone. This was a long time ago, so it had to be like an iPhone 7 or something. Phones still had the home buttons back then. I found this listing for a phone. It was some generic looking post. iPhone whatever for sale, new around 300 bucks. It was a really, really good deal for the time, that I remember. He told me all the small details I needed to know, that it was factory unlocked, never opened, and stuff like that. He sent me a video of the box too, still sealed. The guy, whose name was Melvin, seemed nice and easy to talk to over text. I got his number and we discussed a pickup point. His location on the Facebook ad was much closer to me, but over text he was telling me he was only there this morning and now he went about an hour north. I wasn't happy about this, but this was a really good deal and I didn't want to pass it up. I started asking a bunch of friends if they'd want to come on an adventure with me. Really just a way of making the chore of accompanying me for an hour drive seem fun. My friend Martina actually agreed to come with, on the promise that I buy her food for coming. So this Melvin guy sent me the address of a police precinct about an hour away, saying he only does deals in police precinct parking lots to avoid scams. I obviously had no problem with this. In fact, it made me feel a little more confident in this whole thing. I picked up Martina on the way around 8.30 at night, and off we went. She being in the car and having someone to talk to made the trip more fun. It was also a Friday night, so afterwards we could go out and do whatever we wanted. When I got off the highway... We were about 10 minutes away, and we found ourselves in a very secluded, quiet area. It seemed like a lot of different wooded areas. Occasional buildings and houses, and then more woods. We got to the police precinct, and there was no one visibly parked in the parking lot, besides empty police cars, of course. We drove around the whole building a couple times and didn't see this Melvin guy, who said he was in a black Altima. So I decided to call him. He picked up and said he's having issues with his car on the side of the road and asked if I could come to him. He sent his location, and I checked it. He was on the side of some random road with nothing on either side, and by nothing, I mean woods. That's the kind of area we were in. He asked me to come help him jump his car. He had jumper cables. I said, uh, yeah, I guess I could do that. I mean, we drove the hour to get there. I didn't want to just drive another hour for nothing. Martina was shaking her head the whole time I was on the phone. The guy said, see you soon, and hung up. Martina then basically screamed, no way, this is sketchy, we're going home. I told her we'll just drive past the location he sent and see what's up. I did agree with her though, this seemed incredibly sketchy. I just was very upset if we drove two hours for nothing. We did drive to the location, and when we got to it, we saw the reflection of a car's front lights coming up on the pitch black road we found ourselves on. As we got closer, I slowed down, and it was in fact a black car, but we couldn't see anyone inside or outside of it. Mind you, it was very dark, but I feel like we would have seen someone's head on the inside or something. Martina said to just keep driving, and I said I know. It was about the sketchiest thing I'd ever seen. A pitch black road between two patches of woods, no street lights, no other cars in sight. A pretty convenient place to break down and have someone who's coming with a wad of cash to buy something from you come and meet. I drove right past it, 
Immediately, Melvin starts calling me over and over. I ignored every single call. Then he texted me saying, I saw you just pass me. Why didn't you stop? Turn around. Ignored. Martina is a very positive person, so she laughed about this whole situation and then said, okay, you owe me food. So I looked up the nearest diner and we stopped there for some food. It was a quiet, small diner. We were just about the only people in there, even on a Friday night. The waitress just took our coffee order when a lone guy with his hood up steps into the diner and sits in one of the bar stools. He was wearing a navy blue, dirty looking hoodie. He glanced over to Martina and I, then looked straight ahead, talking to the lady working behind the counter, apparently ordering a coffee. The man kept glancing at our table like every minute, so I whispered to Martina, don't look now, but that guy at the counter might be the Melvin guy. The waitress came with our coffees. I asked if we were ready to order. I said a few minutes, please. When the lady behind the counter handed that man his coffee, he said loud and clear, thank you, darling. It was that guy from the phone's voice, Melvin or whatever his real name was. I told Martina that's him. We need to pay the check and leave. I waved the server over and whispered to her if we can just get the check. She asked if something's wrong, and I noticed the guy look over as I said this. I said yes, we just needed some coffee for the road. So she got the check, I paid, we downed our coffees, and left the building. We got in my car, and Martina said, oh my god, he's getting up. I looked into the diner and saw that guy leaving towards the door. As quickly as possible, I drove us out of that parking lot and sped down the road. And yes, we noticed a black car in the parking lot that could have been the one that we saw on the side of the road. I was driving too fast for him to have caught up. We got back on the highway, and I was flying for a while, until I got a low tire pressure light come on. I knew instantly he slashed my tire. The PSI was going down fast, so to avoid damage, I pulled to the side of the highway and parked it. I went out to confirm that my tire was slashed. I had to replace the tire with the spare, which took about 15 minutes. The whole thing was a disaster, and if you're wondering, yes, I still got Martina dinner that night. Now Martina and I look at it as a crazy story that we can look back on and tell people. It's absolutely horrifying, though how close we were to walking into a trap.